This is a free download from the BBC. For more information, go to bbc.co.uk slash podcasts. Right, recording. Boom. Congratulations on downloading this podcast. You are a winner. What have you won? You've won this podcast Woo! for free. It sounds a little bit like this. Birds eye potato waffles, waffle versatile. They go with eggs, beans, chips, fish fingers, all fish fingers. Birds eye potato waffles, waffle versatile. Hey, what are you doing right now? Fancy joining us down the rabbit hole? We haven't copyrighted it, we've only trademarked it. Copyright's in the pipeline. You've put copyright there. But. No, that's you, know. you put the copyright logo. We haven't copyrighted it, mate. We've we've trademarked it. TM. Okay, fine. Shoes and pants off. Keep your tops on. It's chilly. Jump in. Here we go. So they were auctioning online, live from New York City, some stuff uh, that belonged to Davy Jones of the Monkeys. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've mentioned it. I quite like. The monkeys, yeah. right? You mentioned the auction too. And I put a couple of bids on some things, but they, those things they they went. They they were the, you know the, the prices were crazy prices. Okay, morning Kelly, by the way. Oh, good morning. They were crazy prices. What uh, are we talking like? Oh well, I put a bid on a jacket that he wore in an episode of the Brady Bunch. I put a bid on of two thousand dollars. It went for seventeen thousand dollars. Crazy prices. Anyway, I had a couple of other bids on it for a couple of hundred dollars, and they all went. Um, and then I thought, well, oh, it's, it's, it's streaming live. Okay, I'll watch it. You can watch it live. It's brilliant. So I was watching the auction going on live in New York. It made me feel a bit sad because I kind of missed Davey and, I, you know, and all this stuff was going on. And some of the stuff was quite interesting and some of the stuff was a bit rubbish. And, a bit, and the prices, they were just going for like hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars in, in a lot of cases. And then a driving licence came up, and I was watching this, and it's all... I don't know if you've ever seen an online auction that isn't eBay, like a live auction from an auction house. Um, morning, Just. Good morning, boss. I've just turned out a button I pressed, so I wish I hadn't. Oh. So I was, watching, I was watching this auction of Davy Jones stuff live in New York, and the screen, it's a really complicated screen, because there's, like, a video feed, and it's, it goes, it's all going so quickly. You know, something comes up for sale, boom, 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 $11,000. Boom, 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 $700. But I remember you quite fancied this driving licence. No, I fancied another driving oh, licence. Right. The, the one I fancied had gone up to $800 I was at. I'm not, I'm not spending $800 on a driving licence. But then there's this other the driving license that comes up and it's a bit tatty and I had a bit of two hundred dollars and it went and it's going up and up and up and up and it gets to, to four fifty dollars and there's all these b lights flashing just and it's very confusing yeah yeah sounds it yeah all these lights are flashing and this thing is talking I've got the kids in the room and they're watching a film and I'm I don't want my wife to know I'm looking at this online and it just you know and it, uh, and I, I just I just hit a button Suddenly I've bid $500. Hey. I'm going, off oh, flipping heck. Oh. And I didn't know I'd bid a... It said, um, bid 500, bid 500, right? Mm. And I mm. thought you'd have to type in 500. So I was just, like, messing around with the mouse, as you do when you're bored. On the, you, you just mess around with the mouse. And I messed around and I clicked a button. Hey. And it went up. It said, you said, your bid, is, your bid is in the lead. I was like, what? My what? Your bid is in the lead, $500, for this really tatty driving licence. I'm thinking, oh, don't worry, someone's... I've won it! Oh, no! And I'd won it! And I was thinking, oh, flipping it, I've won it. And I'm sitting there, and I don't want my wife to know I'm doing this, and I'm sat there going, oh... And, um, How did you contain your panic? Well, I, <laughs> I swallowed it. I, I swallowed my panic. <laughs> and uh, so I, I won it, Justin. Mm. And then it flashed up on my screen, you owe $660. I was going, well, hang on a minute. I've won something for 500 six, 28 per cent um, uh, buyer's fee. Yowch! Mugged off, mate. So, and, and then it says, and then it says, then check our store for postage. Hey. I'm thinking, oh, for cr this is going to be like $800. This is going to be nearly $1,000, Justin, for a tatty driving licence. And I'm there going, oh, for... And my wife's going, are you right? I said, yeah, no, fine. Yeah. Just just watching this on... on oh, jeez. And then I'm, I start messaging <laughs> someone. Woman. Why are you crying? Oh, it's really sad. I messaged some woman on Facebook who the same thing had just happened to her. Her dog had jumped on the computer and she'd spent $600 on a load of rubbish. Had anyone made a real bid or was it all <laughs> And so I'm there with this woman uh, um, uh, and we're going, well, what do we do? What? I don't know. How. And I'm going through all of the terms and conditions to, to work out how I can re retract a bid. And I'm, I've got great visions, Justin. It's legally binding. 
It's legally binding. It I know. Is. And I've got visions. I I'm thinking I can do a runner. Right. They've not. They've only got my old bank details because of thanks to the, the people cloning the card. They've not got the new card details. Okay. Because yeah, yeah. I've changed cards since I registered, and I, all of this stuff. And I'm thinking, well, the, uh, um, uh, I can I cannot pay. But then I've got visions of, of going to America, and you get to customs, and they go, and your name kind of flashes up on a list, and a red light starts flashing, and they they pull you off in a room. And I'm thinking that they do that in the states, yeah. and I'm. <laughs> thinking this is awful so I sent an email I'm frantically emailing the auction house and I've never written so I, I've never written such pathetic emails in my <laughs> life right? and I'm writing I'm so sorry I'm uh, um, <laughs> A plum. <laughs> I'm writing. Yeah, I, I said, look, I'm, I'm really sorry. My three. I blamed it on the youngest. Blame my, the child. Yeah, my three-year-old son was. I went to the toilet. I've not been very well recently. And my three. I came back and I found out my three-year-old son had hit the button and uh, put a bid in. And, and you know, and, and uh, things are really tough at the moment for us financially, and <laughs> we're really struggling. And um, you know, it's been a really tough year. And I just, I can't afford the six hundred and sixty dollars plus postage. My goodness, all you needed was a Coldplay soundtrack. Oh, man. And alive, exactly. It's all going on, and um, then, then they, they <laughs> sent out all these emails. And an hour later, they wrote back going, "Well, it's legally binding. You asked the six hundred and sixty dollars." And I'm going, "No, no, no. You don't understand. You know, I've, I'm pleased to God, I'm glad they didn't Google me. Uh, I've not really been working much this year, and <laughs> things are tough at home. And um, uh, you know, my youngest son has been in hospital. And wow. He was in hospital a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So a it's couple, not a couple of years lie, ago. It's it? not a lie. Got an idea? Yes. Why don't you sell it? Because what mug is going to pay six hundred and sixty dollars for that rubbish? That guy. <laughs> this guy. I'll buy it off me for a thousand. Anyway, so I got to the point where the woman wrote back, going, "Look, it's legally binding." And I said, "Look, I'll, I'll pay. I'll pay ten percent, sixty-six dollars. I'll, I'll pay that." You missed out the bit where you said, "I am begging you." Oh, I did right. Yeah, Justin. I wrote, "I'm begging." I wrote, "I'm begging you." No I man beg should you. ever beg. No man should ever. <laughs> Ever bet, and I'm begging, right? And then she wrote back. This woman wrote back. She said, "Look, it's legally binding, but um, uh, you, if you pay the 28% uh, buyer's fee, then we'll let you off 140 dollars for nothing. For nothing." And I thought, I'm in here. Hang on a second. I'm going to push this. And I said, look, that's great, but um, how about if I just give you $100? And she goes, no, no, no. $140 is legally binding. And I said, look, I, I, this, I'm desperate here. I'm, I really am begging. It's been, it's been a tough time. My, my mum's very poorly. Wow. Um, and my dad died recently. Uh, it was two years ago. He, di he did die recently. It was very traumatic. The Sorry rabbit doesn't respect me. You should and have said that. My rabbit doesn't respect me. The rabbit doesn't respect me. The cat's not got long to go. I really don't, I don't get on with anybody I don't get on with anybody that I work with oh. apart from Kelly Thanks. Um, but even she can be quite annoying and then this morning Justin I got this email from the auction house hello Ian we will accept the $100. Thank you. Please send us payment details. And people, what have you done today? <laughs> <laughs> so, I've got, so I basically, I'm paying £67, Justin, for absolutely uh, nothing. But could... I could have been paying over $700 for, uh, for a load of old yeah, rubbish. Hang on a second. We could have had breakfast out for a whole month for that. And you've got nothing. Yeah, you've yeah. been crying poverty or like... Well, I, I am poor. Listen, my dad died recently. My little boy's been in hospital. My rabbit doesn't respect me. <laughs> Here we go. Ever, um, uh, ever uh, push the button that you wish you hadn't pushed and ever had to beg? 08459 455 555. There I am telling a story. Is this really what you think of me? Mm. It was pro I'm reading this. These words are written by Kelly Betts. It was probably intelligent, witty and involved poo. Don't talk about poo all the time. Carry on. Sometimes you talk about willies. Oh, no, hang on, fair play. This bit's about poo. Yeah, you're right. When I was checking in, it was quite late. It was about uh, nine o'clock. I'd been out for ribs. And there was a young man who was about 22, and he was... <laughs> he was saying to the poor woman behind the counter, but my toilet don't work. And she said, well, we can't put you in another room because all of the rooms are booked. You're just going to have to... You know, you're just going to have to use that room. He said, but, but what if I need to have a wee in the night? She said, well, could you hold it? He said, no, I like to, I like to wee a lot in the night. I might, like, I might, and he said, I might want to, what if I want to do a poo? <laughs> he said, what if I want to do a poo in the night? And she said, well, you're just going to have to hold it. All the rooms are booked up. He said, well, but that's not fair, because like, I've paid for a room and I might want to do a poo in the night. Is there not another room? 
And she said, she said something the most mysterious thing I've ever heard. She said, look, OK, we've got a room that we, we can't rent out. We cannot rent this room out. This is what I'm thinking. Is this haunted? They've got a haunted room? She said, look, we can't rent this room out. We don't, we don't tell anybody about this room. It's two floors above yours. But you can't stay in it. But what I'm going to let you do is I'm going to give you the key to that room. And if you need... She didn't say if you need to do a pool. <laughs> she said, but if you need the toilet facilities in the night, you can go up and use what I am now calling the haunted room. And he went away and he seemed very, very happy with that solution. <laughs> he seemed happy with that So, But I felt, this poor lad, but what if I need to do a pool in the well, night? Well, and I, as I, I wee four, five, six times in the night. I couldn't be doing with A, going up two flights uh, of stairs and B, going into a haunted room to do a wee. I don't do a pool in the night. I timed that perfectly. But My what's the alternative? Isn't... I mean, they're going to end up with all kinds, aren't they? She did say... <laughs> She didn't suggest the sink, did she? She suggested the sink wow. before the poo got involved. Okay. Well, it was just wish. Well, you could, you could, you could use the sink. Wow. And that's when he said, "But what if I need a pool?" <laughs> I felt so. so I mean, what? This, these are the classic. And people say to me, "Why do you stay in this hotel?" I stay there every week. A, because it's cheap, and B, because I feel like um, an out-of-work alcoholic writer living in France. All oh, right. Do you know what I mean? Poetic. If you've got, yeah, yeah, it's poetic. I feel like I'm suffering for my art. This is my art. Three Counties Radio. Right, where the hell is Halky Deakity? Halky Deakity. It's here Greece, isn't it? Hey, Adele's listening to us in Halky Deakity. Nice. Getting my morning fix from glorious Halky Deakity. Flippin' heck. Well, well, hang on a minute. What are you listening to? Oh, because Greek radio is utter, utter guff. There's one Greek radio station, uh, and I can never remember what it's called, and between 8 and 10 at night, they play, like, brilliant... Old 60s and 70s French and English and American songs. But the rest of Greek radio is. Good morning, everybody. This is Greece FM. Coming up, we've got some great vibes for you. But before that, let's find out what's happening at Donna's Fish Restaurant. <laughs> Is that right? They have a lot of English speaking things. There's a lot of English speaking radio. The Greek radio is rubbish. Mm -hmm. Good morning, guys. Welcome to Zanti Island. And if you're on a hen or a stag, look out. It's going to be a hot one. Don't forget that Daphne's is giving away free Ginsters. And you can watch the X Factor results live at Darren's Bar. I uh, went for an interview at heart when I got uh, uh, unceremoniously booted off of Absolute Radio. Uh, I went and saw everyone, and uh, one of the people I went and saw was Hart. I was never going to get... Was it Hart? Yeah. I was never going to get no. a job there. I was never going to get a job there. But I, I was sat there for the meet meeting in this poncy bar in London, and the guy came in, he said, sorry, I'm like, he's had a meeting with all the uh, the presenters, and I'm, I've got really, really pleased with the way it's going. I said, oh, why? What, what's, what are you so pleased about? He said, well, I've managed to get all of the links down from 28 seconds to 17 seconds. And I'm sat there thinking, oh, oh, this okay. next 45 minutes is going to be a waste of my time, isn't it? I can do a link in 17... Let's try to do a link in 17 seconds. Kelly, can you tie it and time us? Yep. Hang on. Tell me when to go and do a link in 17 seconds. All right, hang on. Let's get my timer up. I'll take the series. Oh, flipping it. Now remember, you're not allowed to say that's a good record, that's an yep. okay record, or that's yep. a terrible record. You're okay. just going to say that's a record, you're listening to the better music mix. Okay. We'll okay. do seven at seven. So you want 17 seconds? Yes. Get ready? Yeah. Get set? Go. Morning, guys. It's a beautiful day out there, and I hope you're having a lot of fun uh, listening to some of the vibes I'm playing. Coming up, it's uh, 7 at 7, where we play seven songs back-to-back, -back, uninterrupted by me. And we'll also have an interview with Robbie Williams. But before that, it's um, Robbie Williams and his hit, Candy. Stop. I can do it. Oh, turns, do. Out, it's turns out it's easy. Would have paid an absolute fortune as well. Never be near a university. Are you putting this bit in where I sing rude words to a five-year-old? Of course. Oh, Standard. man. This is textbook. Have a listen. Hello. How you doing, Harley? You all right? Yeah. What you got for us? Can you sing the Bums and Willie song? You're, why do you want me to sing that, mate? I love it. If I, oh, if I sing the Bums and the Willie song to a five-year-old, A, Pat and Houghton Regis is going to call up and complain again, and B, I might get an Ofcom against me. But do you know what, Harley? It doesn't matter. It, it, what? It doesn't matter. All right. Does it, it doesn't matter if I get an Ofcom against me, does it? Right, OK, you ready? <clears throat> yeah. Hang on a second. Here we go. Hang on a second. I've got to try and remember the words. Hang on. Uh, hey, 
heads, shoulders, bums and willies, bums and willies, heads, shoulders, bums and willies, bums and willies, and eyes and ears and bums and willies, heads, shoulders, bums and willies, bums and farts. <laughs> Is that all right, Harley? Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. There we go. Let's call this bit Lie Ra. Lie R A. Oh, yeah, that is actually hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you get it? Lyra. Oh, the Lyra. The Lyra. The provisional Lyra. Here we go, and here's why. Good morning, sir. Uh, uh, you've got to hang on a minute because uh, I've got to switch the radio off. OK, Robert, we'll wait for you, mate. Yeah, I'm here now. Oh, that was quick. That was, wasn't what, it? Wasn't it? It was just, uh, just a button, disgusted. is it? I'm disgusted. Sorry? I am disgusted. What, 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 what's wrong, Robert? With my future king of England. Oh, go on. What, which one? Uh, Prince Charles. Right. Gone to Ireland to talk to Sinn Féin. Right. Why are you disgusted? Well, uh, would you would you like uh, people to ring in and tell you they've lost half of their family? Yeah. And I'm getting serious now, sir. I'm 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 li- I'm, I'm doing my serious face, Robert. Yeah, but. Prince Charles yeah. has gone over there to talk to Sinn Féin, yeah. who was in prison, yeah. has been released yeah. by the British government. It's controversial, isn't it, Robert? It's a controversial decision to go and do this, but I guess, um, you know, we've, we've kind of... Um, a significant number of us have made peace with those guys now, haven't we? And we kind it's, of have to... Excuse me, when nope. you lose a member of your family, yep. it will never be... Ever forgotten. Have you lost a member of your family? Yes, I have. Well, I'm sorry to... Through the IRA? Yes. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I can understand why you might be particularly upset about Prince Charles I, going. I, I am upset. I can tell that. that my from... future King of England... Yep. ...has gone to make... He, of his... course, has lost family members due to the IRA, hasn't he? He has his granddad. Yeah, well, uh, no, it was, his, it was Lord Mountbatten. What was he? He was a great uncle or something, wasn't he? Well, yes, yes. They blew him up in his boat. They blew him up on a boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, um, so it's a, it's a, it's, it's not. It's... I'm sorry, Robert. Let me, Robert. No, don't, don't. You can say it. Let me finish. So it's not a. You know, quite often the royal family are accused of um, not being particularly involved. Well, he has a personal connection with this, so it's it's symbolic in so many different ways, isn't it? Well, could I could I ask all your listeners and. Uh, People come on now to speak on your program well, uh, that they've lost their personal family. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not... No, I mean, no. I don't want the show to go down people phoning up and saying they've lost their personal family route because it's, you know, it's kind of... It would, would be a little bit um, miserable for this time of the well, morning. I'm just frustrated. Do you understand? I completely understand your frustration. Of course I do, Robert. Yeah. I've lost my family. Wh- what? C- can I ask when? Uh... Uh, blowing up in England. Blowing up in England. Uh, Coventry. OK, when was that? 1978. OK, and can I ask who you lost? <laughs> no, I don't want to discuss that, sir. Why? Because it's it's hit me in the heart. Yeah, actually. of course it has, of course it has. It's just that, um, you're asking people to phone up and say they've lost their personal family, and, and I'm not going to push you, cos I wouldn't, it's not... In, no, well, I, what I'm saying is, uh, our future King of England... Yeah. ...has gone to see, uh, Sinn Féin, and that's not right, sir. That I don't think... What, right. are you sure it was, it was Coventry, was it? Pardon? It was Coventry, was it? Yes, when no- I lost my family, yes. In 1978? Yes. I don't think there was an IRA bomb in Coventry in 1978. Well, well, they, well, well, just, well, somebody may correct me. Yeah. Thing is, if I'd lost my family in a bomb by the IRA, I'd know where and when. OK, then. Did you lose anybody to the IRA? Well, I, I was in the forces. You would like to know my number? No. Double Did... three oh six oh Robert. Mac. Robert. OK, yes, you... Double you're... three oh six oh. That's great. Robert, your point has seriously been weakened by the fact that you've made up losing a member of family to the IRA... I haven't made anything up. Well, there wasn't a bomb in 1978, mate. OK, then, you, you tell me that, then it was. Well, no, there wasn't a bomb in Coventry in no, 1978. I don't, I don't think that the, our future king of England... Robert. ..should go well, and... that's an opinion. ..and... and... ..cease in fine. Did you lose anybody in an IRA bomb? Yes, I have. Who did you lose? 
My brother. OK, when? When, where and how. And I'm not going to tell you that. Robert, I'd, Robert, I'd I'm going to speak... Can, in, can uh, I speak who, honestly, who Robert? Lost, who have lost the I bomb. Robert, can I speak honestly and openly, sir? Honestly and open, sir. Yeah, it's a very controversial meeting, and I think the point is valid <laughs> to question whether Prince Charles should be meeting Gerry Adams, the leader of Sinn Féin. He should But your point has been completely weakened, sir, because I don't believe you've lost a member of your family in an you IRA don't. bomb. No, sir. Well, OK, then, sir. Uh, I'll call you, sir, shall I? I don't mind, but I just don't know why you would make something like that up, Robert. It's a bit weird. I don't make anything up. Well, Jerry you... Adams was locked up in jail. Yeah, I know, but a, you released. know you know what I'm referring to, Robert, don't you? There wasn't he a bombing have, commentary in 1978, have, mate. Uh, excuse me, could I say something? No, because I, I, I just think it's a really weird thing to phone up and pretend that, 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 that you lost family members I'm in not, a bomb that didn't happen. I'm not pretending anything. But that bomb didn't go off, Robert. It didn't go off. OK, then. Jerry Adams was in jail. Uh, Robert, that's not the point I'm, I'm uh, arguing about. Make your, make your point. Thank you, Robert. Bye. Just, it's a weird... I mean, if I've got that horribly, horribly wrong... I, have I got that horribly, horribly wrong? If I have, boy, oh, boy, I will be the first person to uh, apologise uh, to Robert. I just don't think there was an IRA bomb in Coventry in 1978. I don't think there was. Have I got that wrong? And also, if I am right, and maybe he's mistaken the year and the place, if my brother had been blown up by a bomb, I would know where and when it was. I, do you know what I mean? That's the kind of significant detail... I would store in my mind. If I've got that wrong, uh, let me know and I will apologise on air to Robert, uh, on Ben Didney. Um, and the point he was making was a good point. Should Prince Charles be going and meeting uh, Jerry Adams and, and uh, potentially shaking his hand? I don't know. It's, it, it is controversial, isn't it? But the point weakens somewhat, I think, by... Um, let's be generous. By making a huge mistake you know, in the facts that you've included there. Let's not say lying. Let's say by, by getting some of the facts wrong. Well, in the last uh, 20 minutes, we've gone from singing about bums and willies to a five-year-old to uh, calling an old man a liar. liar Ray. <laughs> great lines, great times, great bands, great pod, great guys, great memories, great drinks, great drugs, medicinal drugs, of course. Hey, this is... Uh, <laughs> Uh, this uh, this is genuinely a brilliant question, and mm -hmm. sometimes I know I'm going to ask a brilliant question, and sometimes I flag through to the studio where you two are, saying, "Guys," and I cued this perfectly. I said, "Guys, the second question I'm about to ask is brilliant." Well, you're not even going to bother hearing the first question. We're going to jump straight to that second question. Here it is. Can you say this is Ian's question of the week, and then you say it, and then oh. I say it? So I'm going to make something okay. special. Ian's question of the week. 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 What's your beef with Cox? Question of the week. That was Ian's question of the week. Thanks. You don't need to know why I asked that. Just trust me. If you do want to know, oh, uh, then you can listen again. On the computer. BBC.co.uk forward slash three counties, 19 May 2015. Oh, they're not stupid. They could find it. Somewhere. Well, no, actually, she's right. It, it, some of them are, actually. 19th of May. Before we started the show on Wednesday, Kelly took a call from a man who said he knew the answer to the question, what actor was named after a rhino? Apparently we'd been asking it all morning. We hadn't even been on the air. So what did we do with a call like that? We put them on the radio. Obvs. bbc.co.uk slash three counties. Thank you, Simon. Your professionalism uh, embarrasses us all here on this show. I mean, I'm going to start flipping show them. Right, coming up on the show. Never trust somebody who wears contact lenses. What else are they lying about? 
Dealey's taking it to the streets. And also, we've been playing this all morning. Will we get a correct answer? Who is the actor named after a rhino? 08459 455 555. Across yes. beds, hearts and bucks. This is BBC Three Counties We are Radio. down the rabbit hole. In, oh, we've got a call on the quiz question. It's been going all morning. Good morning, Thomas. Uh, good, good morning, Ian. How are you? I'm Thomas. I'm, um, I'm very, very well this morning. i tell you what's confusing me this morning, Thomas. Um, and I know you've... Have you been listening all morning? Uh, well, I, I, I was listening to the previous show. OK. Uh, Kate, Kate, uh, Kate. OK. Kate, Kate Rome. Uh, who? Kate Rome, she was okay, called. And I'm sorry about that. But what's confusing me, Thomas, is... Have you, have you looked out... Have you been outside yet, mate? I am outside now. I'm just walking in to walk. Tell me... Um, tell me what you see. I see... See what you Ma- see? Maylands... Maylands Avenue. Well, don't, tell, well don't tell us the streets. I was doing Roy Walker. See what you see. I see green grass. Yeah, no. But look up, what do you see? Sky. Yeah. What kind of sky? Blue. Exactly. Sunny? Sunny, very sunny, yes. Blue, sunny sky. What's the temp like, Tom? The, about uh, 56. And 56. That, it's cold, isn't it? Quite, quite. Quite. So, how does that work? Uh, this is a serious question for all you meteorologists and scientists and sun fans out there. How does it work? It's sunny, but it's cold. Wagwan, Thomas. Um, that means uh, sunny but cold. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. How does that work, though? I don't know. Anyway, you've called in. What? Who's the actor named after a yeah, rhinoceros? I, 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 I think it's Rhino Neal. This is Rain O'Neill. Oh, no, Thomas. It was Hulk Hogan. Oh, dear. Thanks for playing. No problem, no problem. Ta-ta. 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 Well, you've been talking about contact lenses this morning. Oh, and the fact mate. That, uh, you know. Mate. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what. Mm. If you were... And I, this, this, I've been thinking about this theory a lot over the past 24 hours when I first eschewed it. If you wear contact lenses... You're a liar. What, el- what else are you lying about? There's a picture yeah. today. Right. Picture in the... Um, let me find this, because this is actually very, very important. 08459 455 555. I'm not wrong. Page f- I'm right. I'm not wrong. It's no, one you're of your right. catchphrase. You're right. Page four of the Daily Mail. There's Ed Miliband on an aeroplane, sitting behind a woman in a cowboy hat. Why would you wear a cowboy hat on an aeroplane, woman? <laughs> She's not a tart. She's not a tarty woman. She's no. like a normal woman. Probably, I'm going to guess from that photo, 47. Wearing a cowboy hat. <laughs> but there's Ed Miliband. I'm thinking... Well, he looks a bit different. Oh, hang on. That was the chair. Hang on a minute. He's got spectacles. He's wearing glasses. I'm glad that guy didn't win the election, because he's a liar. I didn't know he wore glasses. He didn't wear glasses once in his election campaign. If he was going to lie about his eyesight, what else was he going to lie about? Weapons of mass destruction, Tony Blair. You are bang on the money. Bang on the money. 08459 455 555. I'm right. I'm not wrong. Mm. That's my catchphrase and my dramatic music. <laughs> Do you want to hear that again? Yeah, please. I'm right, I'm not wrong. Ooh. Boss. Yes? On the streets this morning. Yes, mate. It's already getting tense Is with it people. Off? It's kicking off with people who wear contact lenses who are oh. denying the truth yeah. about <laughs> them being liars. Oh, go on, go on. You ready for this? Yes, mate, I am. Here's a lady this morning on a coach getting harassed coach. because she wears contact lenses. I put it to you, you're a liar. Why is that? Why do you say I'm a liar? Because you're tricking the truth. Well, I need to look good. <laughs> and it makes, and I don't, these doesn't make me look good, I'm afraid. OK. But when you do wear your contact lenses, yeah. would you admit that, that you're a liar? No. I'm not lying. Are you sure? Yeah. Why do you say I'm a liar? Because you're, you're tricking the truth, aren't you? You're, you're hiding behind something. You're giving a, a vision to the, the public which is not hey, true. I don't know. No comment on that. Thank you. Exactly. No, no comment, comment yes, on that. She's you. tricking the truth. Yes. Do they make... Waterproof hearing aids. That's, I hope not. Well, uh, why well, don't want deaf people swimming? No, not deaf people. Hmm? Seals. Oh, the is noise he still around. <laughs> hey, here's the thing. Sorry, sorry. You know we're talking about um, truth tricksters, the liars that don't that don't wear glasses and they hide the fact that they're short sighted by wearing um, contact lenses. And it makes, just makes you think, as I'm sure it makes both of you think, if you had the common sense. What else are they lying about? Tony Blair probably wore contact lenses. Weapons of mass destruction. Right? It was a lie. 
So what else? They Ed Miliband, it turns out, wears glasses. Well, how have I only just found this out after I may or may not have voted for him? I should have known that before. Okay, Chuck Ramuna probably wore glasses. That's why he pulled out of think- the la- Labour leadership thing because he thought, oh blimey, they're going to find out I wear contact lenses. So- I wear contact lenses. Oh, you Would you like me, me to wear a T-shirt that says I wear contact lenses? I'd like you to be honest and wear glasses, lenses. mate. Well, supposing you're wearing a T-shirt no, saying I, I wear contact on. lenses, ironically, you've never even heard of the My Ramones. My face is too small for glasses. What do you mean, no. so stupid? I look they like, make... look who's talking. No, they make them for babies. They could probably make you a pair. You look like despicable me. <laughs> Minions! Um, so why was I saying that? Because I wear them as well. Oh, no, because we went swimming the other day. Uh-huh. That's handy if you've got contact lenses in. Oh, no. Impossible if th- you've got specs on. There, were f- there was a fella in the swimming pool with, with glasses on. I thought That's you... crazy behaviour. I thought that is some form of deviancy. Are you sure it wasn't goggles? Did he have the goggles on over the glasses? No, he didn't. He was wearing glasses. I thought you weirdo. Anyway, please continue. Seals and that. Yeah. The okay. noise from building offshore wind turbines oh. could be damaging the hearing of seals. Who cares? The scientists. Who cares? What I mean, rules? all they're going to hear is, oh, 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 oh. Anyway. What? That's, the, that's the builders as a hot young lady walks past. <laughs> 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 Ecologists tagged 24 seals with devices that relayed their location and diving behaviour while turbines were being installed in the wash off England's east coast in 2012. They combined the data with information on when pile driving was taking place. Pile driving. To predict the noise each seal was exposed to and then compared this with the levels that damage hearing. Half the seals were exposed to levels above damage thresholds. Let's all think about the seals. I tell you who's an honest man, and I respect him for that, even though he, I don't like him as a human being. What? Lenny Henry. Oh. He's skinny now. Was fatty. Now he's skinny. Fatty and skinny are in the bath. I think we all know what happened. Fatty blew off and skinny laugh. That's based on a true story. Mm. You know what happened when they went to bed, though? <clears throat> no. Fatty rolled over and skinny was dead. Hey. So it all ended badly. Tragic. I didn't know there was a sad ending to that story. I wish I hadn't uh, brought up fatty and skinny. How's fatty now? On his own. Oh, dear. Gutted. Well, obviously not. It's, it's fatty. It may but be the impetus to lose some weight. We're not in any way suggesting um, uh, that, that, that Lenny Henry has ever killed anybody or blown off in a bath. That is not in any way what we're but suggesting. we've all seen him in bed. What we're suggesting is he's lost a lot of weight, and I've got to say, Lenny, well done. Well done. That's honest of you. We've seen the true Lenny Henry. It's a thin man. The, do you know what I mean? <laughs> that was the thin man inside the fat man. You got it. And also... Fu- it was just the one. Oh, this is interesting. Funny man, Lenny Henry. I oh. did not know that. Funny man. Of course I did. Delbert Wilkins. Okay. Theophilus P. Wildebeest. Delbert Wilkins radio show. Okay. I don't know if it was Delbert Wilkins that did that. We went to see the Delbert Wilkins radio show being filmed once. Is it good? No, it was right. It was Delbert Wilkins. It's like totally wicked. That was Delbert Wilkins. Right. Who was that fella that? Who knows? Who can sing? <clears throat> who can sing the theme tune to the Lenny Henry show? He had a show. Oh, Lenny, yeah. Lenny, Len. Lenny, Lenny, Len. Lenny, Henry Show. Then there's a bit. But down, but down, but down. Break the four minute mile. Did he sing it himself? I bet he did. Anyway, funny man Lenny Henry is getting serious about money and could leave his millions to charity instead of his daughter. He won't. The comedian, 56, 56 said loaded celebs like Nigella Lawson and Simon Cowell, who have vowed not to hand all their cash to their children, are probably right. Ah, and here's the thing. Lenny's daughter adopted, you see, mm. so he doesn't feel the bond with her. <laughs> oh, that's not true. We, we, have, you spoke, have you asked him? I read Dawn French's book and they seem to get on very well. Well, uh, well, Dawn French is, is divorced from Lenny Henry. No. Do you know what I'm just saying? This is... This is uh... Lenny, who adopted daughter Billy with ex-wife Dawn French, said, this, there is a thing of not over-privileging your children with stuff if you're very rich. Because how are they going to learn? What does that mean? Do you think he's very rich? Because if he was, he wouldn't be doing the Travel Tavern advert, would he? That's why he's very rich. That oh. would pay a fortune. Right. That would, I would love that gig. Premier in. Listen, I use your hotels. I would love that gig. And also, the thing about that gig, not only does he ca- get paid, I'm going to say, a million pounds a year, he's got, um, he's got the, the gold card. Oh, he's got right. the, it's like, you know, you get the Black Nando's card. He's got the gold card. So that opens any door in any Premier Inn, even if there's somebody just, in it. It's just his fingerprints. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. It just yeah. puts his hand up. It, to he the slides door his finger through the, through the slit. Do you think he And is... if, if Lenny Henry slides his finger through your slit, you better move out the way because he can kick you out of that room. Mm. Do you think he entitles him to extra hash browns? Why not? Why not? Gosh. He's allowed to make noise in the quiet zone. <gasps> the star, thought to be worth £5 million. Pounds, 
um, banged on about something. I got bored of reading the story. Oh, he said, don't spoil him, is what he said. Don't spoil him. Hey, a restaurant is offering discounts to women customers as long as they wear short skirts. (laughs) Guess where it is? Um, China. Guess which province? Um, Nanchong. Shandong. Shandong! Well, surely it should be to men, then, who wear kilts. (laughs) Shandong? It's just the way I'm Not now, I'm full! Why does what I see... All right, Kelly. All right, mate. Okay, here's the thing. Not getting on with my wife. We split up. We get divorced. I'm having a tough time on my own. Will I ever find love again? I, I rent a small flat. It's it's dirty. It's I don't get to see the kids. It's a really tough three years. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then suddenly I'm doing a show with you, and I say something funny, and, and you, you laugh in, in, in that patronising voice you've got, and our eyes lock, mm. and I realise that my happiness has been sat just five feet away from me mm. this whole time, yeah. this whole six years that I've known you. It will be six years because I'd have been on my own for three years. Yeah. We fall in love. Yeah. Okay? We fall in love. Mm-hmm. We go out on some dates. Yeah. Uh, they're romantic. We, we giggle. It's a bit weird. We keep it secret from work. We end up having fantastic Why are you sex. Everyone? It's the best sex you've ever had in your life. It goes on for minutes <laughs> at a time. And you cannot believe the heights of ecstasy that it takes you to. Right? Yeah. After three or four weeks of really good sex, I think, do you know what? I'm going to ask Kelly to marry me. Mm. Get down on one knee. I do it in a fancy restaurant, Nando's maybe. I ask you to marry me. You are overwhelmed that somebody so talented <laughs> and good looking would, would have interest in a, 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 common, a common girl like you. Common farmer's daughter, mm. right? We get married. Okay, we're on our honeymoon. Okay, we go somewhere really classy. We go to Las Vegas, mm-hmm. and we're we're at the roulette table. And I said, Kelly, it's twenty five quid, mate. You spend that. That is yours. I don't even want to see that back. Yes, if you make some money back, I would like the or- original stake and twenty percent of what you make. But otherwise, that's yours. Mm-hmm. You go. Oh, thanks, Ian. Just going to put my glasses on. I go. What the? F- Excuse me. I wouldn't wear glasses. You, well, you would for roulette, mate. No. You would for roulette in this story. OK, all right, in this story for roulette. You put the glasses on, mm. right? And I'm going, what the... F- but you like... What the hell are you... But you... No, no, no. You love me. No. You love me more in glasses. Well, I loved... I loved... I loved Kelly, you could see properly. I loved <laughs> Honest Kelly, you could see properly. I go, you wear... But how could you see... Oh, no, don't worry, Ian, I wear contacts. You f- unbel- You've lied to me. What else have you lied about? What else have you probably lied about your drug addiction? You probably lied about your five kids. You probably lied about the fact um, that you used to be a man. All of these lies. I'm questioning our relationship, Kelly. That's the answer to the question that so you asked. What, I've forgotten. At what point would you like me to tell you that I wear contact lenses? I don't want you to wear contact lenses. You want me to and not that's see? why I'm divorcing you. And you ain't getting a penny, and you're not seeing the kids. I've got this 25 quid. Well, you've got that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Travel news. Some people complain about the show don't want to come on the show and then hang up. Some are happy to come on and pwn me. Some are nine years old. This nine-year-old did not pwn me. No. No, but she complained. There was too much giggling for it to be a serious complaint. I destroyed this nine-year-old. I took this nine-year-old down to a little place I like to call Chinatown. Mm. I did have her parents' written permission. Um, And I totally... Uh, ripped her argument limb from limb, vowel from vowel, consonant from consonant. She now listens to Chris Evans. Yeah, fair play, that's right. We, we lost her as a listener, but sh- sh- she'll learn. Stay there, Justin. We've got... The next call is a complaint. I'm guessing it's probably about you. It can't be about me. Good morning, Mia. Hello. Morning. Morning, Mia. You've got a complaint. What, what's your beef, mate? The deletion that is Justin, I'm going to let you go. The complaint's about me, strangely okay. enough. Yeah. I'll speak to you later <laughs> on. Ta-ta. Yes, Mia, I've, de- I've deleted the littlest hobo. I'm complaining about it that you shouldn't have. Oh, but it was Mark's fault. Mark phoned up and he had, he was angry about it. Well, he's wrong then, isn't he? Well, well, I've already got someone on Twitter saying they're going to stop listening to the show now I've deleted that. I've, I've had um, an email from Paul saying, did I just get to work and turn on the radio to hear you've deleted the littlest hobo? If this is true, I'm going to listen to Radio 2 instead. I mean, but Mia, it's, you know, it, because of the way the BBC is uniquely funded... Does your mummy and daddy, do they have a TV licence, Mia? <laughs> Yes. They do. OK, just checking, just checking. Because of the way that we are funded, um, I have to do what, you know, what people call Mark say. So, it's gone, Mia. No, no. Do you want me? Do you know what everybody else say? Well, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I'll tell you what I've got. Um, let me see. I can, hang on. How about, how about if we replace the littlest hobo theme with this? 
No. Uh, okay. Okay. Hang on. How about this? Hang on. This. This might be good. This. This might work instead of the littlest hobo. How about this? Here we go. No. Okay. Right. Hang on a minute. Let's try. Let's try this one. Hey, Justin Dilly, let me tell you something. Hey, Dilly, your no. career is ending. Um, ah. How about this? Well, Mia, Mia, yeah. I, th- I think we're going to have to say goodbye then. You're going to have to find something else to listen to. I'm really sorry. <laughs> it's been great entertaining you. How old are you? I'm nine. It's been great entertaining you for the last nine years, but um. I was on. I was on the show for, um, in Easter. Yeah, it doesn't. I'm afraid that doesn't have any truck with me, mate. Uh, y- yeah, I remember you coming on, and um, we're going to have to say goodbye. Really sorry, I know it was nice to meet you when you came in and stuff, but we, what, what, what station do you think you might start listening to? Radio 2. Radio 2, well, it's a sad day, Mia. <laughs> Thanks for your support up until now, and I wish you the best of luck with Chris Evans. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. Well, that's sad, isn't it? Blimey. Here's Justin Dealey introducing a song. Can you introduce Joan Jett for me, please? Yeah, here is a fantastic record. Joan Jett, who just absolutely loves it. Good morning, Beds, Hearts and Bucks. Here we go. <laughs> I don't think you can say that. I saw him dancing there by the record machine. Colin's in Dunsville. Morning, Colin. Morning, folks. Sorry? Morning, folks. Oh, are you doing a turn? Oh, OK, I'll sit back. Go on, away you no, go. No, no, Ladies no, no, Please no. welcome to the stage. It's Colin. Colin, my, there you go. My usual um, salutation. You have you. literally never said that before in your life to me. Oh. Never. Go, go no. back and... Go no. back. You clipped We destroy it. all the Colin files as soon as they exist. Oh, do I've not you? clipped you saying, morning, folks. I'm looking. Hang on. Wee Willy Wonky. No. I've got no Colin clips, mate. I'm not oh, in the well. bedroom. Apart from that one. I don't want people making love while I'm talking. So boobs is not news. Drawing games is not winning. <laughs> Are any of these voices you, Colin? No. Never did to... Uh... It's not it, is it? Um... Before we begin... That's not you, is anyway, it? Anyway, don't, don't, don't Say worry about that. I'm, well, I'm not worried about it. Um, I'm literally not worried. I, I couldn't I worry. I couldn't worry any less. Oh, all right. Wait, wait till you go. Hey, here. you know what we say in this country, Colin? What's that? I couldn't care less. Oh, all right. Right. Well, do you know what they say in America? No. I could care less. <laughs> but yet, yeah. But yet, it, they're saying it as though it means the same thing. Yeah, I know what you mean. They go, I could care less. Ah, uh, could you? Could you care? Well, then why? You, so you could you could care less? No. Ah, uh, I hate Americans. <laughs> Colin, anyway, please get to the point, mate, because bake, we've got a busy show, mate. Baked beans. Yes, sir. Fibre, a little bit of mineral and protein. Yeah, and a, a lot of good uh, good times. Yep, and yep. the um, tomato sauce. Yes. Tomatoes in any form. Yes. Are excellent for you. Well, <laughs> oh, that's nice, Colin. If you love tomatoes so much, why don't you go and marry them? No, 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 I didn't say that. Oh. I was just giving you the fact. Uh, well, uh, and uh, where is your, what's your medical training, Colin? Um, I have worked in a hospital laboratory for many years. What did you do? Were you a rhesus monkey? No, but um, <laughs> I could do everything from taking your blood oh. right through to cross-matching it for an operation. Oh, could you do uh, the operation? If push came to shove, Colin, could you do the operation? No. Could you do a colonoscopy if you had to? No. OK. If I had to, I reckon I could. Do you? If I really, really had to, yeah. If I was on a desert island and someone needed an emergency... Co- I don't even know what a colonoscopy is. That's removal of the colon, is it? Yeah. Or is it a camera up the bum? Anyway, either way, it's just a camera up the bum, actually. I could do that. You just kind of blow <laughs> to kind of open the hole and then you put your phone up there on a mm, selfie stick. Well, I don't know about that anyway. <laughs> Kelly's asking me why would I need to do it on a desert island. You just don't know, mate. You just don't know what goes on in these desert islands. 
Well, no. Well, Colin, it's, it's a really, true. we're taking a really weird twist, this phone call, mate, so I'm going to have to let you go. All right, mate. Time for a dirty slice of fried Eurovision. Yep, well, you're here. We might as well uh, get our money's worth. You are our Eurovision correspondent. Yes. Um, what, what happened last night? Was there a semi-final last night? There yes, was, there was! Yeah. Well done! I think it was Congrats. the uh, first or second. One of them. There's I don't two. know, mate. You're the expert. I would think second because the it's second, tomorrow, the it's final, tomorrow. isn't it? Yeah, but that might mean there's one tonight. No, they'll they'd be preparing to, tonight. They'd, they'd, they'd have, have to have a day off. Yeah, they'd they'd have to have a day second off. Second semi-final last night. Very exciting. Um, I understand that uh, the Estonian entry, not as exciting as some of the yeah. ones that could have been in that... Uh, can, uh, the last couple of Estonian entries been... Let's fr- frankly, bonkers. Yeah. Um, they've gone with a very toned down uh, version. This Tell time. us about the previous Estonian en- entries. Why were they so bonkers? Uh, one was, I think, a couple of guys dressed as spacemen. Yep. Um, and that's about as much as I know. I know that in one of the newspapers, uh, Scott Mills says, here it is. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of ballads, and at first I thought, where's all the high camp? But there's still some in there. I mean, he probably stole this um, view from somebody else. <laughs> but would you agree with whoever, whoever first said <laughs> That, uh, that it is a lot of ballads in there. Well, I can tell you from some extensive research I've done uh, by reading Pop Bitch that uh, the... <laughs> is that still going? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I have unsubscribed years ago. Uh, no, it's worth it. It's worth a look once in a while, especially around Eurovision time. They are hot on it. But, I unsubscribed um, when uh, I was a story on there. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, carry on. I didn't get money for that. <laughs> it was um, a long time ago. It was a lifetime ago. The, uh, the, 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 the interesting thing, you would expect... Uh, happy pop songs to do well. Yeah. But actually, the majority of winners are in the minor key. Yeah. Which oh. is, uh, you know, possibly revealing about ballads. 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 JG Ballard and Ballards. the Miners. Yeah. What? <laughs> um, it's just a rumour, by the way. It's, uh, it's also um, been shown that if yeah. you have... Oh, what was this like? I think, yeah, the, the minor keys and A's Gosh, do you've, particularly you've well. made... Um, like, funny, I'd have thought in the music business, E's would have done particularly well. Uh, it's funny how you've managed to suck the life out of one of the m- most glorious celebrations of world music. You've just completely sucked it off, and it's all, all of the, the, the life and the energy has been sucked out. Like a, imagine there's a pipe, right, and that pipe is right at the e- one end of the pipe, there's a big vat of energy and life. Mm. And at the other end, there's you, and you're just sucking, 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 sucking. <laughs> Make a sucking noise for me. <sighs> All of that life and energy has gone from that vat and is now in... In me. In me. Yeah. You, yes, in you, oh, yeah. There we are. But then, now you've expelled it. So it's all gone. OK. Into the Atmos. Electric Velvet, though. Electro Velvet. Yeah. That's the UK's entry. We know. Sounds a little bit like the Bird's Eye Potato Waffles theme. Have I mentioned that before? Could, uh, could you do me a favour? Yeah. And uh, could you please sing the Bird's Eye... Could you sing this year's British Eurovision song entry? <clears throat> Bird's Eye Potato Waffles Waffly versatile They go with eggs, beans, chips, fish fingers Oh, fish fingers Bird's Eye Potato Waffles Waffly versatile this bit is serious. Speak in a serious voice. That piece of what? That yeah. piece. That piece of audio. Oh yeah, that piece of audio actually led to a lot of complaints. Too many to note. Here's one. Morning, in. What's your beef, fella? You got beef? What's your beef? Yeah, you're giving a frozen food company free advertising by singing a song instead of uh, having the oh. maybe tomorrow hobo song. Which which uh, which song? Sorry. The bird. Uh, the potato waffle song. The what? The potato waffle song. Well, you've just given free advertising to them twice. No, I, I just said potato waffle. Well, I didn't name the frozen food company. But you've given advertising to that potato-based product. Yep, it's a worldwide product that we grow in the ground. We don't grow waffles in the ground. No, potatoes. Do they grow in the ground? Yeah. So, hang on a second, Tom. Let's, get, let's dig deep, right? Let's find out. Is your beef because um, the birds I murdered your father? They didn't. Or is it because you um, uh, want to have a waffle now? Or I could be related to a member of the Findus family. (laughs) (laughs) Tom, is your last name Findus? It could be. Does your wife look like a crispy pancake? 
No, she looks like a fish finger. <laughs> Sing the song, Tom. Let it out. Let it. Let it out. Sing it. Sing it. No, the best I can do is let it go. Let it go. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Birds eye potato waffles, waffle versatile. They go with eggs, beans, chips, fish fingers, oh, fish fingers. Birds eye potato waffles, waffle versatile. How can, how can anyone? How can anyone have beef with that? Although I bet they go nice with a bit of beef, actually. Uh, uh, I don't get this job. We've had a complaint. Um, so I've got to uh, apologise for uh, undue prominence to a product, and I've got to play this instead. Birds potato waffles, waffle versatile. They go with eggs, beans, chips, fish fingers. Oh, fish fingers. Birds eye potato waffles, waffle versatile. It's the BBC. It's the BBC, and that's what we've got to do. Oh, fish fingers. Yeah, tell me about it. Here's something. I'm, I'm remembering food. I didn't... Because I'm only just... Uh... <laughs> Who made those waffles? I'm, I'm wondering now. Scoins has just messaged, this is a breach of my human rights. <laughs> yeah, that's why I voted Tory, so you've got no human rights. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Um, uh, I, I'm remembering food, because I've only been eating meat now well for well over a year. I'm remembering food that I've, I've not had for a long... I've never had a fish finger sandwich. Oh! oh I but you want, like, not a posh one. Posh ones are rubbish. Oh, you yeah, well, proper... we, we went out for lunch with your little girl and the posh fish finger sandwich. What was that all about? I know, it was, it was more like small bits of battered... Co it was too posh. No. Too posh. You want a really cheapo one on a cheap bit of white bread. Ooh, fish fingers. Ooh, I've only yeah. just learnt fish finger sandwich. Oh, mate. Toasted. No, that's, toasted. that's, that's, that's mm. fish fingers on toast. No, no. A friend of sandwich. mine puts them in pitta. She likes a pitta pocket. Mm. Ooh, fish fingers. Mm. I, can, I, can I set that as my um, text alert, please? Can, is there a way? How do I do that on my phone? So that if, if yeah, everyone, every yeah. time I get a text, I get... Oh, fish fingers. That would be awesome, <laughs> wouldn't it? Right, let's be... I'll tell you what we're going to do. Can we put this as just a bonus track at the... Everyone be quiet, OK? We're, this is the bonus track at the end of uh, the po this week's podcast. Uh, and if this is if you want this as your text alert, Paul Scoyne saying uh, all fish fingers, OK? So we have a nice silent bit here. There we go. Silence, and then... So it's a nice clear thing. Here we go. Oh, fish fingers. There we go. That's now, that's now your text alert. Uh, that, that'll, that'll learn him. That's funnier than it needs to be, isn't it? It really... I mean, it just... It doesn't get... Uh... I like mushy peas. Oh, fish fingers. That's a meal. They go nice. That's a meal, isn't it? You want we got, we got a, that's it. I go, Do you know what I really fancy for my supper tonight, actually? I fancy a Dave and Scoins. A Dave and Scoins, yeah. I like to mush you peas. Oh, fish fingers. <laughs> I really fancy a Dave and Scoins. We should have a little bit of lockers. Um, we should have a little bit of lockers. Yeah. What, that last bit? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah? I've, cli I've clipped. I've clipped. Yeah, yeah? It will go after the... Here it is. It will go now. Who that put is, that together? That was Kelly Betts. Well done, done Kelly that. Betts. That's not wow. bad, is it? I'm impressed by that. Yeah. Now, uh, we're here, guys, mm -hmm. because we are, bizarrely, three gentlemen, two heterosexual men celebrating Eurovision. Three heterosexual men, I've just been told in my ear. Yes, yes. That's, celebrating that's... Eurovision, which is unusual. It's unusual. Paul Scoynes, you're the official Eurovision correspondent for the show. Hello. Give us a little update. What's happening this weekend? Well, all the talk in the stadium seems to be that uh, big things are expected from Russia. Their YouTube hits certainly uh, far greater than any of the other yep. countries. And why would that be, you wonder? I mean, it's wonder, not like yeah. they've got some sort of organisation that can manipulate... Any anyway, um, so they're looking good. Mate, uh, I'm not uh, having this. I'm what? not having this. Um, you, uh, so you, are you saying that the KGB are not manipulating YouTube hits for uh, Russia's <laughs> Eurovision entry? Is that what you're what? saying? That's not they, happening. They've got, bit, they've got a bit more stuff to sort out with Ukraine. One you gay marriage. Like that? Well, it's just shush. Now, Lockers, why are you in here? Because I'm going to a party tomorrow night. Yay! Yeah. He's going to your Eurovision party. Eurovision. Eurovision. And you're really looking forward to it Eurovision. now that we've told you you have to do it. Yeah, man. The party being hosted by a local singer-songwriter <laughs> who... Who, local singer-songwriter who um, uh, is a little bit 
bit of beef with the Eurovision. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Raymond Marks. Good morning, Raymond. Morning. How are you doing, fella? You all right? Yes, fine. Let's just wait for this beautiful... Uh, tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening. Now, so, uh, did you... Have you been watching the s- semi-finals, Raymond? Oh, yes, very, very carefully. What, what have you made of what you've seen? Well, Russia, the lady in it looks like my daughter-in-law, so oh. my son is a man of taste. Oh, very, very nice. Let me not be presumptive. What do you think of this year's song, Raymond? Um, well, it's very different. It's very nice. And, um, you know, good, good luck to Letra Velvet. I really hope they win. Um, Are they going to win? Um, it's very, very hard. Uh, I think a more honourable way of approaching Eurovision is to say, can we be in the top five? Because if it's the top five, <laughs> we, we've done well. We, we've got, I'm just going to play a snatch of it now. This is the, the Electro lo- Velvet song. Hang on one second. Fried potato waffles, waffly versatile. They go with eggs, beans, chips, fish fingers. Ooh, fish fingers. But <laughs> potato waffles, waffly versatile. That's the song. I like it. It's, it's, it's full of spunk, isn't it? Well, that was something about fish fingers. That wasn't still oh. in love with you. Oh. Is that not it? Oh, flipping it. I've been sent... I've been given the wrong file. OK, right. <laughs> uh, Raymond, you're having a party on Saturday night. You do this every Eurovision, don't you? Well, we sent it last year, and it was a big success. Who... 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 how many people are there, and what happens? Well, there's about 10 or 12 of us, and, uh, the, 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 we have a drink, and we watch the show together and just chat. But each person scores each song according to how they feel about it. And we score them on the song, the, mm. the performance, and the scenario. And um, we see if we can ID who actually wins or who comes in the top. You, this is the reason that Matt Lockwood is here. You've, invi- you've said that Matt can come round uh, and record a little piece, a couple of pieces for our show to the party. Uh, Raymond, let me give you the opportunity. If you want to uh, revoke Matt's invitation to your party, no one will think any less of you. No, we want to confirm Matt's invitation. Well, that's OK, because so I will be coming. Do I have to behave in a certain way at this party? No, just relax and enjoy yourself and right. be part of the, part of the <laughs> thing. <laughs> and just relax. So, in terms of relaxing, does this involve me standing up, sitting down? What position will well, I have we'll to adopt? We'll be sitting down watching the television, right. smart TV, of course. Oh, and, nice. um, you'll have a score sheet and you can score yourself. Like oh, the lovely. Of have you got a big TV, like 62 inch or something? <laughs> How many inches you got, Raymond? No, no, it's only it's 42 inches. No, oh, that's plenty. Uh, uh, and that's it, guys. That's your lot. That's the end of the podcast. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for voting for us in the People's Choice Awards. And um, uh, we wish you... All fish fingers. ...to each and every one of you. Thanks for listening to this free download from BBC Three Counties Radio, your local radio station for beds, hearts and bucks, on FM, AM, digital radio and online at bbc.co.uk slash three counties. And if this is if you want this as your text alert, Paul Scoyne saying uh, all fish fingers, OK? So we have a nice silent bit here. Here we go. Silence and then, so it's a nice clear thing. Here we go. All fish fingers. There we go. That's now that's now your text alert. <laughs>